Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's the place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So for everybody who's been waiting for this video, say hello to the new conservatory. And the bags under my eyes after how many days of building work that I've had done in here. I'm also realizing that there is now a significant echo in this room and I'm really hoping that I can take that off in editing but time will tell <laughs> but yes so you can see a small glimpse of the conservatory as it is now some things have stayed in the locations that you were used to especially when it comes to filming I can't not have the backdrop of my giant as Meryl Dance behind me but you can see different plants now and you can somehow see through the glass and to the outside now, which is it makes for a nice change. <laughs> so a lot of things have changed. Thanks for everybody for being super understanding for me being absent for I think a week or a week and a half, basically, just because I had a lot going on. But let's dive into the story time of what got me here. And I have been taking not only clips and photos of the whole process, which I should be adding on the side here or overlaying it over the video, but I've also done, and I still have a check to see how good that is, a time-lapse video of, I don't think, maybe taking away some of the plants, but I definitely have done it for bringing the plants back in because it was a bit of a journey, let me tell you that. But let's go into the story time of how we got here. I will pick you up and show you at some point around the new conservatory, I'll point out because a lot of people were really curious to see what those new things are and things that I've changed and why I went the way that I went with this new conservatory based on things that I learned from the old conservatory and I will be covering all of that. If we're starting from the very beginning, obviously a bit of background for the people that maybe are joining for the first time, I'd moved into this property and the old conservatory probably around March time in 2021. So right in the middle of when people were still in lockdown, so that was a fun move. I'm trying to get everything in here. Had minimal viewings of the, of the house, unfortunately, because of lockdowns, because of COVID and all of these things. So one thing I did not spot is that the wooden conservatory, the old wooden conservatory, was in a horrendous state of disrepair. Because I think that both the times I came to view the property, it was chucking it down with rain so I didn't go outside in the garden to see the state of the conservatory on the outside. That has become a life lesson for me. If you are looking to buy a property, this is a very kind of out there comment, but if you're looking to buy a property and you're looking at ones with something like a conservatory or with something like a greenhouse that's established there, this probably goes without saying, get outside and do a 360 view, ask questions, all of these things that you know what you're getting into. Don't do a me, basically. <laughs> this is a very expensive mistake because this cost an obscene amount of money to like get redone, let alone everything else. But yeah, so I have done another video of the previous conservatory and a tour of that. I think there's a couple of videos. I'll link the first one there where I actually just give a bit of a quick tour. And I think I then did a secondary one, like a follow-up video. It might have been closer to kind of like winter time and some of my tips then. And I will add that up top there as well. But that brings us closer to where we are now. And I'm getting glare coming in from the windows. And I will touch on the fact that there's a lot more light coming into this conservatory. And the one thing that you might be able to spot is that you can see through the roof now, which was one of the big things that I changed. I might move slightly into the shadow and hopefully that's not me being too dark, but otherwise I'm getting blinded basically. Let's start on how this whole thing started after the decision was made that I was going to replace the old conservatory because the old conservatory, let's be real, the only thing that was keeping it, there was a running joke, the only thing that was keeping it together was hope and expanding foam. I literally went in and filled in gaps and hopefully I've got some images somewhere here that I can add in so you can see that expanding foam on the bits of rotting wood. Otherwise I was really convinced that at some point the roof was going to come down on me basically. 
So talk to, uh, I think it's a local company actually, and we were also getting the windows and doors done for the entirety of the house. So a bit of an idea of the scope of what's been happening over the last two to three weeks, barring the, the usual of me running my business and filming for all of you and editing and all of that stuff, the whole house got new windows and doors. And for the people that have seen my house tour of my house plants, every single window ledge in the house had plants in it. So that first week when they were replacing all the windows, I had to remove every single plant from every single window ledge in the house so that they've got access so they can remove those windows and put new windows in. That was fun. And past that point, that first week was done. And shortly thereafter, I think they had a bit of a quiet period. So they were able to kind of fit me in back to back in terms of installations and stuff like that. They were just like, oh, you know what? We'll send the electrician into the conservatory because that needed to happen before the old conservatory came down. That was the process. The old conservatory, except for the brick base, the entire thing was going to get demolished and starting again in the same shape. And the reason why I went with that, I would have loved to have gone for a different shape or expanded out further because there is space behind where the camera is that I could have expanded further. That would have tripled the price. And the price was already obscene as it was. I'm just like, I don't have that kind of money laying around. So not a me problem. Also, some context for the people that might have not been here for a while. This is a property that was always going to be a bit of a move in, fixer upper, essentially sell and then move on to a bit more like a forever home. So this just needed to be good enough for me, but also add value to the property when I'm selling on. So with that out of the way, yes. So they said, look, we need to send an electrician in because there's a ceiling fan for the people that have seen the previous videos that needs disconnecting as well as the four and only plugs that I've got in the space. <laughs> that electrician was meant to come on the Friday, the week where the windows were starting, so two weeks ago. In order to get everything done, the problem that I was going to have is then that some of the plants that are in front of these kind of plugs and everything like that were going to have to move even earlier. So I knew that every single plant, every single plant shelf needed to be disconstructed in here to then move into the house and upstairs to a spare room for a few days and all of that entailed. But I wanted to minimize the amount of time that these plants were going to be spending in regular household humidity with much lower light levels than they used to in here. So I was already stressed <laughs> a lot on kind of moving things early, but I had to move at least a couple of shelves with plants out early so, we, so that the electrician can come in. So I did that on Thursday, two weeks ago, for the electrician to come on Friday. Did the electrician bother turning up on Friday? No. Did the electrician tell me that he wasn't gonna be bothering to show up on Friday? Also no. Luckily the company worked, or at least their sales team worked, on the Saturday, so I called them up. They didn't have a clue, bless them. But they said, look, everything should go ahead because my big concern then became is that this is the weekend that I've got spare to move all of the plants out because the, construct the, the deconstruction was going to start as early as Monday. And I'm just like, I need an answer from somebody because the electrician didn't come on Friday. Can they still start deconstructing on the Monday? Because I don't want to have to move all the plants for longer than I have to in worse conditions, basically. But at the same time, I've only got the weekend because this did take two full weekends, one weekend to move everything out and one weekend to move everything back in. Granted, moving back in was faster. But yeah, so they couldn't really answer for that. They did come back and said, look, no, 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 we're guaranteed that it's going to start off on Monday. Everything will be fine. And it did. So the people came on Monday to start deconstructing and the electrician also showed up, very apologetic and all these things. That's fine. As long as it went ahead, I don't mind. I was stressed to no level on that time when I was going to have to move all of the plants out. And hopefully I have got some videos that I am putting up either in front of me, to the side of me, somewhere around here, basically, of moving all of those plants out. So let me tell you this, it was a bit of a challenge basically, because a lot of things had to move in. 
bit of a spoiler, not all the plants made it. I will mention a few plants that did not make it, including one that I think is going to make people sad as much as it made me sad. Some of it, I was just sitting there going, you know what, it's time for you to go. I have got proper, actually, I think pretty much everything that has gone, I have got propagates of. I also got rid of a lot of propagates that I've been propagating for three or four years and they're still on two leaves. And I'm just like, I don't have time for this, basically. And by get rid of, I do mean some stuff ended up in the compost bin, some stuff ended up at two other kind of plant collectors. So there was benefits to be had, essentially. But yeah, so when everything had to get moved out of here. Obviously, the thing that you might not be seeing at the moment is there's quite a few grow lights even in here because the lowest shelves in the conservatory don't get an awful lot of light because there's a wall behind them. They do now, which is slightly worrying. But yeah, um, so everything had to be moved. As I said, some of the stuff, there is a door here that leads into the dining room of the house got moved there because they could still get the light coming in from the conservatory in here and some of the other stuff moved to the spare room pretty much every other plant and plant shelf was in that other room with the tiniest of windows i did take my dehumidifier up there because i was worried about humidity but by the time i got all of the plants and the plant shelves in that room it was about 75 to 80 percent humidity which is a bit much in a room that isn't built for that it's got standard walls it's got fitted carpet i did not want the room destroyed because of the humidity level so i bought the dehumidifier in just to bring it down to a more reasonable 60 to 65 percent especially because it was only going to be for about a week and it really was just a week in the end but yeah that was all fine some of the plants struggled a bit and i can kind of point some of them out so for instance i'm trying to think now bizarrely enough there is now what i call the kind of epipremnant corner so i've had a reshuffle it kind of makes sense if i was going to have to move everything out i there are better places that things could have been now that i'm kind of setting things up so there is that so there is an epipremnant corner interestingly the enjoy and the mandula pothos the green bits not the white bits. The white bits are all pretty pristine at the moment. I've had either, and I can't tell if it's cold damage. I doubt it would have been cold damage. They were never in a situation where they would have got cold or light damage. I'm assuming it's light damage. There's also something I spent a very long time watering plants yesterday where there wasn't as many on my list that I needed to water through my plant care app. But because for the last week when I was kind of keeping them in other rooms, I pulled back a bit on the watering. Not to say that I didn't water, but to say that I didn't water quite as heavily because I'm just like, you're not getting as much light. You probably aren't getting through the water that quickly. Interestingly, I think the epipremnums, I kind of might have misjudged that, thinking the epipremnums will be fine of all things. Ironically enough, I think that was the only one that had a major problem. <laughs> except for the Milano Prize behind me, which in the span of being out of a high humidity environment, got covered in spider bites. So I had to deal with that before it came back into here, basically. But, and yes, before anybody asks, ideally I should be isolating some of these plants, but, but I was able to hopefully deal quite aggressively with a lot of the mealybug problem that was happening in this space because so many things were close to each other. You can see things have got a chance to breathe now. But yes, so decided to kind of move all of the plants back in. Obviously, the, the work went really, really well. And I'm trying to think back on the day. So the first days, they pretty much took away all of the windows and they kind of had already installed the the doors I've got, hmm, I don't know what they're called, they're not French doors, they're French doors and slidey ones. They're the ones that kind of, there's two doors and they open out basically. But they had half glass before and half wood. Now they are fully glass. <sighs> so much joy that that brings me. It's so sad, but it's great. And then what the other thing that was done on here is there was a lot of smaller, thinner panes of glass, which basically meant a lot of columns in between the glasses. I was able to get 
there's one massive square glass on the side there so instead of the two panes that there were before so there's a lot more light generally that's coming in now because there's a lot less vertical columns weren't able to get rid of as many of the vertical columns on the ceiling but the difference on the ceiling now is previously i think it was something called polycarbonate so it's just imagine two bits of plastic with loads of lines of cells in between them essentially it's what you would normally get sometimes at those plasticky looking greenhouses not the ones that have got the clear plastic but the ones that have got the slightly more opaque plastic i'm looking that way because in the distance through the glass of the conservatory i can see my greenhouse that has got polycarbonate all the way around but it was a very thin polycarbonate and that was one of the problems that i wanted to address when redoing the whole conservatory because the volume of heat loss that was happening in here in the winter months was insane especially now with the prices being what they are in terms of energy in terms of heating this space so i wanted glass and this is all the glass that's gone around both the roof and the windows is very very thick double glazing basically very very thick double glazing so which is great the other problem that I had as well with the polycarbonate, it's more of a, a, a YouTube filming issue rather than a conservatory issue. Whenever it rained, can you imagine like heavy rain falling onto plastic? Basically, it just was so noisy. You couldn't even hear yourself think, let alone talk to a camera. So this has been a lot better and it has rained since it's been installed. And yes, you can still hear the rain, but nowhere near to the voluminous level. The echo is going to be something that I'm going to have to work on, but you know. But yeah, it's it's one of the reasons why it kind of had to go because it really wasn't energy efficient in the winter. In the summer, it was the, the polar opposite problem in the fact that it then got super super hot in here. I'm not saying that it won't do now because that was slightly opaque, and that is a le lesson that I've learned along the way, and. I need to stop at some point because I hear the bing bong go, the doorbell, and dog goes crazy. It's because I'm waiting for a delivery today, which is the peelable glass paint that I used last summer on the outside on a few of the windows to make them a bit more opaque so that all of this sun doesn't come in. Because this is slightly stressing me out. You can see throughout the video when the light is shining in on some of these plants it's a touch too high for comfort basically at this point and we're still early on we're not in the summer yet where this gets blasted with sun so i have got much much larger tub of the peelable window paint and that should be arriving shortly actually it's going to be here in the next hour i would imagine and uh, i will be painting some of the windows not all of them and some of the roof not all of it basically so the predominant light that's coming in is in this direction at the moment so probably what will happen is the two doors and the windows that are there are going to get a coat of that paint as well as the ceiling panels at the top interesting thing to say about the ceiling panels at the top they have used something i think called I can't remember, it's like a blue glass so it does reflect out some of the uv that's coming in so mainly because obviously conservatories are not just meant to grow plants in like somebody would grow in a greenhouse. It's a lot of people in the UK would have furniture and they'd sit in here. So it does take away some of that harshness, basically. One of the things that I have noticed, and I'll see if I've got some screenshot to add there, through the window, you might be looking at on a really, really bright day, there might be four to 5,000 foot candles coming in through the glass the ceiling that's getting the same light because it's got that layer that blue glass only 2000 is coming through so what i'm hoping it might mean because originally the plan was i always knew that i was going to paint the windows and the ceiling because last year i don't know if you remember if you were here i had those god awful um shade cloths that made me feel like i was in a bad army movie <laughs> Hopefully this year I'm going to be doing that with just glass. And over here, did not think last year when I did the windows. I'm just like, well, I don't have a ladder tall enough to reach from the outside and do the glass painted on the ceiling. It's such a shame because I could have done that. 
I do, however, have a ladder that I can paint the glass from the inside. So that's what's going to happen. So, you know, occasionally the brain engages. That situation is really important. <laughs> so I'll be doing that, essentially. But yeah, so that's going to be happening quite soon. But yes, I went hugely off topic there. Coming back to bringing the plants back into the space. So, as I said, some of the stuff struggled. The Epipremnum struggled. The Melanocrysum struggled a bit. Most everything else. The monster elbows that are behind you also struggled. I always do this. My elbows, whenever I change their environment ever so slightly out of here to anywhere else, the, br the, the brownness on the white bit starts almost instantly, basically. So, but, you know, it's part of the joy. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the majority of the plants did okay, actually. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to look around, and most of them are okay. Like, you can see for the first time ever, because this was on a higher shelf. I don't know whether or not it's coming up on the screen. But this is my Philodendron Billetier. So that's really cool. The Gloriosum that was on the side there is tucked away in a corner because the majority of its kind of growing stem was bare and is mainly in the front. And it's kind of a nice kind of thin plant at that point in time that I can kind of put in and I'd like it to grow into its space a bit more. I've got things like the Philodendron Serpents behind me. The... Um, propagation from the air layering of the Dark Lord is here. Same thing goes, this is actually still my mother plant, which is absolutely huge at this point in time of the Philodendron Painted Lady, but we have got the Anthurium, the Tarifolium right behind me, which I really wanted this to be a lot closer to me when I'm filming. I, I have very, very strong love for this plant. So um, it's feeling a bit limp at the moment, so it needs a good drink of water because you can see the amount of light it's getting. Some of the allocasias are here as well. So this is the Brancifolia allocasia, which kind of looks a bit like a palm. That loves a bit of light, so it's getting it there. But again, off topic. Bringing all the plants back in was an interesting experience, say the least, and hopefully I've got some of the time-lapse videos that you're seeing over my face at the moment. So coming back to the situation with the build and how it went. So after they took away most of the, the glass from over here, so it was this entire room was freezing cold. And obviously because I live in the UK and this is always like what happens, it was on the coldest and wettest two or three days of the year where this was entirely exposed to the element. And I had the plants directly on the glass French doors that kind of between this space and the house. And I was a bit worried about the Esmeral Dents because the leaves were directly on there, but I wanted to give that some of the best real estate in terms of light because of its size, basically. So I was a bit worried because it got really cold. It got down to minus figures. Luckily, I think the glass was just about thick enough that it didn't cause any issues. But time will tell. I'm not counting my chickens just yet. But yeah, and it's also worrying because the Esmeralda Dance was one of the only two plants that has ever experienced cold damage in here when I first moved in and I didn't have a radiator. Yay! So yeah, that was the first day. Second day, all of the glass went down as well as the roof. And I did feel so sorry for the poor workers that were working because the day that they decided to take down the roof and install the new roof, was the day where it rained from the moment that they got here really early in the morning, another word I wanted to use there, until really late in the afternoon, it rained solidly. So they were drenched less than by the end of the whole process. So anybody from the UK knows that I made a lot of cups of teas for the workers <laughs> when they were here on that day because it was miserable, bless them. So, yeah, that went well. And then the next day, they just came up to do the finishing touches, so putting the ledges on the window ledges on the inside, making sure that everything was sealed. And I was actually down in Cambridge that day for a client meeting. And I came back 
to a fully finished conservatory and cannot tell you how happy I was. It was absolutely amazing and I was ecstatic and I'm just like, oh my God, it is so warm. The one thing that did worry me is that the agreement that I had, and again, this is something I've learned along the way, all the other windows now in the house, and this is by law, I think now in the UK, at least for the standard house windows, they need something called a trickle vent. And for the people that are not from here, I will add images or videos here just so you know what it is. Essentially what it is, the very top of the window has usually got a slit on either side, both on the inside and the outside. It's usually some form of covering and there's, for lack of a better word, flax that you can open and close. And it just helps to circulate the air when it's like winter time and you're not going to be opening windows because it's too cold. It doesn't leave, it doesn't leak in too much of the cold, but it lets some of that humidity out. Desperately was needed for the rest of the house because this room used to leak out because the French doors that connect the conservatory to the house aren't as airtight as I would like them to be. So this used to leak humidity into the rest of the house and I was having other issues in there. So that is good that it's there. But the windows and doors when they were going on here, I thought they were going to have trickle vents. They did not. Luckily, on the last day, they cut out two sections of the windows. So I do have two trickle vents. And that's the new thing now as well. So I've got the new doors that have got glass all the way down. I have now got two windows instead of just the one. And that was very much on purpose because I learned fast last year that when it gets really, really hot in here, Unless I have both of those doors fully open and the window, it didn't get enough of a breeze going and the window was right next to the doors. So there wasn't really any space for the breeze to happen. Now the windows and doors are all relatively far away from each other. So that should get, I was hoping for a window down there. They didn't give me one. Arguably because they know that if I sell this and somebody else is going to be using it, why would they want a window that opens onto a fence? whilst both of these windows open into the garden at least. So there is that. It's for the next owners as well. But yes, and then after this was all said and done, it was move everything back in. <laughs> that was a fun journey. So one of the, and I'll touch now on one of the plants that didn't quite make it, which was the saddest one. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was, no, I'll start with some of the ones that maybe I've got spares kind of a thing. So the Philodendron Golden Goddess or the Malay Gold, I think, or the Thai Gold. I can never remember which one it is over here. That one was huge. It was probably my height, but it was very long and thin and scraggly. And I'd already taken cuttings and propagated them. They're very rooted and they're growing great in the semi-hydro mix. That is no longer here. Several small propagations, but nothing major of anything that I sh that you would necessarily have heard me talk about. But the big one that left, and it still hurts me that that had to go, was my tree of a variegated early marks. First ever video on this channel as well, and still probably one of my most popular videos on this channel. So it was with a very heavy heart that plant had to go. And there was good reason for that, basically, is. It was standing on a smaller shelf. It was attached with just ties to another plant shelf. And even moving it off, it kind of folded in half. So a lot of its growing points had snapped or were ready to snap. I took it up to the other room where it was going to live and I couldn't even straighten everything up to get light. So it was leaned against the wall for most of it. So it didn't get that much light. The intention was to try and bring it back in. And by the time I was moving everything back in, I'm just like, about 70% of that plant was reverted back to green, which I can buy relatively easily. And yeah, I took the decision that at that point, that had to go. I did take cuttings from all of the variegated sections from that. I've already got its babies living and growing happily around the house anyway. So it was a shame to see such a large plant, and it was one of the first plants that I managed to get that large. But you know what? New leaf. Let's move on. The collection can grow from here as well. It's still an established collection. I've still got some of my big beasts of plants. 
They're in arguably better positions now for me to see them. There's better airflow. That was one of the plants that was just causing a lot of space hog, essentially, that was happening. Probably a forest of bugs that was living in that as well. So, yeah, unfortunately, that had to go. But everything else more or less made it back in here. I've lost some of the space because it was wood and I was able to kind of drill hooks and there was a support column that was coming over here. That's no longer here. So a lot of the plants that I had that were hanging and you can note that behind me, I no longer have my Nepenthes or my pitcher plant. It is now on the wall as you come into the conservatory up at the top because that is the only bit that I can drill into and get hooks in. So essentially... I had my Fernleaf cactus that was at the top there. That was beautifully hanging. Now it's against the wall. See how it does. My Hoya polynera or the fishtail Hoya is there as well. The monkey mask orchid. I can't remember what the name is now. Hopefully I'll find it and put it at the top there. Is on the side there. The pitcher plant is up there. And the staghorn fern, who, which has always lived there, is there. I haven't got some of the paintings that I have back on yet, but I will be adding those in the next few weeks. The most important thing was to get the plants in. And I've had shuffling things around. So some of the taller shelves are placed in different locations. Some of the so shorter shelves are placed in different locations. And I think anybody in my situation if they had this many plants that were that established before they wouldn't have moved everything quite so easily because it was a mammoth task but i did use it as an opportunity when this was all getting done i'm just like right knowing what i know now from having used this space and how things are growing in it what do i need where so things got moved to much better locations so i've got a much bigger shelf behind me there and there's a reason for that because i needed to block some of that early morning light and I've got a lot of plants that are light hungry, they can all go and live there. I've got a lot better use for some of these shelves that have got bigger spaces. I was able to unattach the philodendron as Meryl Dense from the shelf and it's now living on the floor to give it enough space to keep growing because at the moment it's my height basically. So and you can kind of see the, the, the leaf size now that I'm standing next to it on quite how large it is and some of the plants have moved in i've got this propagate further down which you won't be able to see now but yeah so things getting moved was interesting basically because the shelves had to move first which meant that all the plants that were on the shelves in the other rooms had to come off them then move all the shelves i was able to at least not have to disassemble the shelves moving them back in then slowly move all the plants back in. And the moving back in obviously took, I thought it was going to take longer. Ironically enough, it took less time. But it was something that it took a tiny bit longer than I was thinking it would because obviously I had to think and be very cognizant of where was going where, essentially. And I was very fortunate, and hopefully you might have seen already in some of the clips, I had somebody who was able to help me move everything around. But... Yeah, it, <laughs> it's not, it's, I'm not going to lie, it's not going to be doing, it's not going to be something I'm going to be doing again in a hurry to do this again. I'm probably going to move properties at some point in this room, going to have to move with me again for the fourth time in my life. <laughs> but I'll deal with that when I deal with that. But yes, I think that's everything I wanted to cover on this. I'm, I've already spoken for quite a while. Let me pick you up and show you and talk you around the conservatory. And I might do that. I'm trying to see, I might just move you in the camera and then I can show you different bits basically. So, okay, so this is a different angle than what you're used to seeing. So this is the rest of the field then from Esmeral Dense. I've got the, the Galenia bellanobulata right there. This is the Anthurium Esmeraldens. I've got propagations of the Splendid there. This is the Epic Remnant Corner. Oh, I'm so happy with it. And it will bounce back. I've got the Shangri-La. I've got the Marble Queen. We've got one errant 
philodendron gigas in the background. We've got mandulas, we've got enjoys, we've got epipremnum pinnatums, and a golden pothos as well, and an errant begonia amphioxus there as well. You might be able to see the fan. So the fan has moved away from where the door was towards here, and it can blow air a bit more. You can kind of see here dangling the polymera, the holy polymera. Can you see it at the corner there? Probably not. I'll see if I can get some pans of the top there is where the Nepenthes is sitting as well. And this bit here inwards is the French door that I was talking about before where the Philodendron Esmeralda dense was leaning up against. And that leads into the dining room and the living room as well of the rest of the house. So this is one of the corners. The radiator is right beneath there along all of these shelves here. So these do get some decent warmth as well. This is a really cool thing that's happened. I have now got guttering that comes off the conservatory roof and goes down into my very own water butt. So I should be able to use some rainwater in the summer. I generally don't like doing it in the winter because of the pain and then I need to let the water warm up in the house. And the summer is a bit easier and I can use some of that as well, which is quite nice. So let me pan you this way. Right, and this is the other side now. And you can see I've got the crystallinum seedling here, or seedling, propagate actually. I think this was a pup originally. And we've got the Bilietia, the Melanocrysum here that you might be able to see. The queen is here, the serpent, some alocasias. This is the Florida ghost. There is a pedatum, the philodendron white princess, which is looking a bit scraggly at the moment because I've took a lot of cuttings from it. I don't know whether or not you'd be able to see here. Maybe you might be able to see some of the leaves peeking up. Mm, probably not, actually. Maybe right at the back is where the Gloriosum is. I've got Siltepicanas there. Uh, I've got a bit more center stage for this Ficus elastica taniki, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a place that does get quite a bit of light. So this is one of the bits that I would want to put that peelable paint because it was absolutely amazing. And you can see the Anthurium vicii peeking out on the side here. And this might need a bit of watering. And you can already start to see that potentially some bleaching is happening from the lights. So yes, that paint is coming today. And either today or tomorrow, it will be painted on before I start having severe issues with some of these plants. So let me shift you over again. Right, and in an entirely different angle now, here you can see a lot of my Anthurium. So, this one is the Anthurium bellatus, and I think there is another name for that. I've got my regal there. I've got propagate of the White Princess, some propagates, uh, Chewbacca's baby, so my Begonia size Mario. The propagate, which is bigger than the original plant now, is here. I've got one of the smaller propagates of the Gloriotham, which is looking a bit worse for wear. I am propagating some seedlings for the allotment, so vegetables as well. And either before or after this video, you will be getting a vegetable video. Might not be for everybody, and I do understand it, but a lot of people have asked for an allotment video, a vegetable starting video, so that is coming. And yeah, and there's another grow light at the bottom. You probably can't see that, but yeah. And then over on this side, you should be able to see, I've got a few more. So I've got the somatophyllum at the top. And there's more of my propagates that are happening here. You might just be able to see the top bit of that there. I've got an empty shelf. I haven't had one of those for a very long time. I've actually got a couple of empty shelves, or partially filled shelves. You can see the Monstera albo on the side. And what I did is because I had two Monstera albos, I've put one on either side of the door. So it's very tropical when you open those doors and come in from the outside. So I am super, super happy. And let me tilt you around so you can actually see the doors as well. Really, really briefly. There you go. You can see those doors there. And then I'll bring you around so you can see these are the other big, big shelves. But let me see about getting in front of that so I can actually talk you through what you're seeing there. So this is a corner that you don't often see here. You can see the bigger window. You can see the other, this is a slightly greener elbow that I've got. And you can see the top bits are green. Some of the 
the datum and theorems here, some propagates. I've got my crystallinum down at the bottom, the mother plant, the sylvaticum, some orchids, some alocasias. And then we've got more plants up top there. So, oh, I'm blocking on this. I will come to me and I will add it at the top. And we've got the Syngonium album, which is looking a bit worse for wear. You might know, you can't see the, the little begonia sized Morii parent plant is about this big still. So, looking a bit scraggly and a bit worse for wear, but it will bounce back. It threw a bit of a wobbly, but you know. And we've got, I think, this is an epipremnum. This is skin dapsus, potentially, but it's what called some people call the philodendron dragon or the monstera dragon. I'm not entirely sure with this one. And I've got very, very bottom, I've also got some of the last remaining calatheas in my collection. So, yeah, let me actually pick you up and do you a bit of a plan of everything so you can see. So, starting off from the side and here I'll be able to show you the top bits so you should be able to see where the nepenthes are. You can see that white pot is where the fern leaf cactus is, which is a little bit sorry for itself. In front of that is the Hoya polymera. And then we've got the staghorn fern, and then we've got the little orchid on the side. And here you can actually see the epipremnum corner and you can see what I meant by the leaves now if I show you really quickly it's that section there and it's kind of happened a lot but not on the white bit it's really interesting so the Shangri-La epipremnum it doesn't matter what I do to it whenever it changes in the slightest it starts throwing yellow leaves so we'll see what happens but you can see where the radiator is there you've got more propagates apologies it's not as clean as it could be but my space never is and you can see the Esmeral dense, including the anthurium esmeral dense, just peeking out behind there. The begonia melanobulata, which you can see some of that crispiness has happened when it moved. Ignore the neighbor's gas, gas, gas bottles in the background. We've got the skin dapsus hongongensis, I think, if, it's, if I'm not mistaken. We've got, and you can see sky is so nice. That's looking a bit worse for wear at the moment. I think that might be just it's getting a bit too much light. That is the Philodendron Eximium, and it's been propagated several times, so it's looking a bit scraggly. But you've also got the Monsteria Adamsonii Oreo variegata, a propagate of the Florida Ghost. The Monstera Opica Peru is there, a propagate of the Esmeral Dense. You can see propagates of the medium medium there. There is, it's a shame because this is one of the plants that I really enjoyed looking at. That was the Anthurium arrow, I think some people call it, but it's one that looks a bit like cups, which is such a shame because I would like to see it a bit more, but I don't have any space anywhere else for it. Brantianum is there. This is the remainder of the size of the Esmeral Dense, and you can see there's a second pot and this huge massive new leaf is from the propagate and then coming in you can still see my govi thermometer and hydrometer you have then got the milano bryson there and the bilietier the crystallinum i've got some baby anthuriums there oh there is one more calathea crispy forever We've got the ficus there, ficus tniki, got the queen, we've got a propagate of the dark lord. This is also the mother plant of the philodendron painted lady, just to pan you back down again. That is, in the back is the splendid, in the front is the philodendron dean mcdowell, the amplicium, you can see it through the leaves of the Vitara folium, the white princess, the pedatum right at the top there, the Florida ghost, I'm blocking here. You can now see where the gloriosum is and you can see why I've done it that way. It's looking a bit cluttered at the moment, but hopefully it will start opening it up its leaves. The one of the permanent that I couldn't fit anywhere else, which is the mother plant for the 
my Doula Popo, so that's there. You can see all of my Anthuriums, which are getting way too much light. More of the propagates there. The Chewbacca's baby, which is absolutely huge. You can see the Glorious in there. This is another thing that got a few spider mites when I moved it, so that's been treated. The vegetable seedlings there, and ignore all the plugs of everything else. More propagates there, the empty shelf. And so this is a lot more of propagates. So that's a flor Philodendron Glorious. And more propagates at the top, as well as the last remaining section of Vericosum that I've got. I would say Buono, Matophyllum, Complicium, and then you've got. First, Monstera Albo, apologies for the state of the garden, but you can also see the humidity has dropped a bit much now. But look at the temperature, guys. That is absolutely ridiculous. And more propagates at the bottom. Some of these plants are actually from the shelves or kind of window ledges, which is still currently being done, because that's the other thing that I did not mention. The old... Utility room in the old kitchen, which is now turning into an old dining room, a new dining room, is getting done this week. So <laughs> I'm not done just yet. You've got the dehumidifier there, which is a must in here, otherwise the humidity gets ridiculous. That's the other albo. Again, apologies for the mess that you're seeing outside. And you can see the other plant shelves there. So this was a quick tour. So hopefully you've enjoyed. This is kind of a bit of a long video. I will see if I can add all of the clips that I had from the build at the very end as a B-roll. But what do you think? Are you looking forward to experiencing new content in essentially what is a new venue? It's the same venue geographically, but new, new environment altogether, basically. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm also very, very tired, not going to lie. I probably will be tired for another week or two because I'm not quite done with the rest of the construction. But hopefully, if I can get back to doing two video drops a week, that would be great. But at the moment, you might have to bear with me for just the one video drop if I can, because it's, it's a bit a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Between young puppy, constant construction work in the house, running a YouTube channel, and running my own business. At some point, I need to like sleep and rest, basically. So, ah. yes, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully, I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.